Uh, welcome back. This should be video three. This is the one we're going to uh, introduce the portfolio, which is your submittable document um, that is going to go in at the end of this training that we are going to look over and also where you can ask for additional help or support if you don't feel like coming to us another way. Surely put that in there. We will look through those. Uh, you can get to the mini portfolio through this link or through this portfolio assignment. Either way, you're going to get a link to um, the Schoology doc. Now, this first one, Schoology to Docs document, that is just to help people who haven't yet done an assignment that takes an assignment from Schoology, a document, has you put it into Docs, fill it out, and then submit it back to Schoology. So this is just a set of directions for that. Uh, that is very helpful. It's one I created for my students a couple of years ago uh, if they weren't there when we went through it the first couple times. The assignment is this portfolio template. When you click on it, it will ask you to make a copy. Um, then it will open up this blank document that will, you will send into Docs. And in there, you're going to put teacher name is you, not, not the teachers of the course, but because you are our student, it is teacher name. We're going to make a frame for a student uh, throughout the course of this training. You're going to put a picture of that here. We're going to do an assignment called Genre Switch. You're going to put that here. And then you are going to answer some questions uh, at the end of this training. So our original intent was to not have you open this until the end and then put everything in. But due to some confusion, um, I'm going to introduce it here and let you see where we're headed. You can fill it out along the way. Um, and again, that is the advantage of online training. If something comes up that we need to change, it's no big deal. We just go ahead and change it. Um, so this is in your Schoology under Portfolio January System Staff Development. Remember along the way, we are here to help you. There's my email. There's Veronica's email. Don't hesitate to reach out. The first part of our portfolio was this thing we're calling a student frame. So for this, we want you to on a piece of paper or on a blank notability page, whatever is going to work best for you to do this. You're going to need a picture of it or a screenshot of it at the end. Uh, you want you to think about a student, and this is a student that you want to help. This might be the student that you are thinking about right now because of something that happened in class this week or because we're coming up on mid-try and the student is on your mind. Um, this is the student that you're thinking about if you think about students at 3 o'clock in the morning. You're going to draw a picture of that student in the center. We purposely made that a stick figure. I am not looking for a portrait of this student. I just want a representation for you of this student. Um, we did think about putting in some rules. I work with a teacher who used to have a five-finger rule on any drawings. So try and make this be something that reminds you of your student. No words on this yet, and no names. We don't want to put on a name of this student. Uh, we just want you to make uh, a representation of that student, and then don't make it fill up the whole page. Make sure specifically there is room around the edge for what we're going to call a frame. Now let's talk about what this month's high operational practice, or HOP, is. Uh, we have built relationships and talked about how to do that. We continue to do that. Uh, we've talked about integrating prerequisites for academic learning. This month we're talking about identifying and activating students' strengths. At the, as you go on, you'll see the rest of the hops that we're looking at building into training this year and next year. Read this quote. By becoming aware of students' strengths and incorporating them into instruction, educators can boost student achievement. Whether we are thinking about students whose cultural backgrounds differ from the mainstream or about students whose cognitive strengths diverge from the model commonly emphasized in schools, the same principle applies. Teaching to strengths works. Quote from Sternberg, 2006. In order to get at strengths, sometimes we need to do what we're calling a genre switch. This is not a new activity. Those of you that have been through PBIS training, um, they talk about this in... Uh, context of redefining behaviors that we sometimes um, tend to focus on and looking at how those behaviors can actually benefit the students. So for this assignment, you are going to go into this link genre switch and it's going to pull up in a Word document. It's going to ask you to reinvent some behaviors we see in students as what the strength is that goes with them. 
when you are done with that. We have put a key to go back and take a look and see if how you did. Now, there's not just one answer to these, so any synonym or anything that is similar works just fine. The request is that you read and pen correct it. Uh, this is something that math teachers do quite a bit, um, and other teachers I know do as well. I know many of the science teachers I work with do correcting in class where they ask the students to self-correct and get that immediate feedback. So go ahead and red pen correct it. When you're done, uh, you're going to take a picture if you printed this out on paper, or you're going to do a screenshot if you did this in Docs, and you're going to submit it into that portfolio under the genre switch assignment. Go ahead and do that now, and resume with the next video when you are done. When you're done, we're going to go to, on to the student strengths frame.